question. Um, feel free to get in your word. We want you to walk through with us because you don't have the notes. Um, so Galatians chapter um, 5, verses 13 to the end of the verse, the chapter. And for those who are watching on YouTube, we greatly appreciate you guys' support. Thank you guys so much for watching. We greatly appreciate you guys tuning in. For those listening on Apple Music or uh, Apple Podcasts and Google Play Podcasts, thank you guys for listening. Please rate us and subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, feel free to engage with us. Everyone on our, our description box, there's some links for you to give, support our mentoring program, Propel. There's a lot of ways you can engage with us, so we'll greatly appreciate your support. But in the meantime, let's get right into Galatians 5, verse 13. For you were called to freedom, brothers, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. Let's read it again. For you were called to freedom, brothers, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. But I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident. <clears throat> Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, um, Jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these, I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things, or in some texts practice these things, will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passion and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another, etc. Let's go ahead and pray. Father God, we thank you so much for this word, Father God, that you have deposited inside of me, God. I pray, Lord, that I'm a vessel worthy enough to articulate from your heart the exact words you have for these great women and men to hear, including myself. Father God, we welcome your presence. We welcome your insight, your wisdom. Spirit of God, speak through me, Father God. Continue to, to, to discern the hearts of your people in this room to be able to give me the insight and the words that you have for me to say to uplift, encourage, convict, rebuke, or whatever you have planned, we give you the space to do what you have already desire to be done. With that being said, God, if you're not in this room, we're wasting our time. So God, join us today and give us what you have for us to say uh, here. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. <clears throat> Let's get right into our notes. Uh, I have, a, I have a, a good handful of notes. I want to kind of get through this in the next 45 minutes or 50 minutes or so. Um, but let's get right into verse 13. For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word or one phrase. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. Let's look at the first point. We were called back to freedom, but unlike Adam and Eve, we are commanded not to use that freedom for the flesh. We were called back to freedom, <clears throat> but unlike Adam and Eve, we are commanded not to use that freedom for the flesh. Give your spirit all the opportunity your flesh desires. Whichever one you give opportunity to will flourish. We were called back to freedom, but unlike Adam and Eve, we are commanded not to use that freedom for the flesh. Give your spirit all the opportunity your flesh desires. Whichever one you give opportunity to will flourish. For you were called to freedom. The freedom that God has given us, like I said in the previous two weeks, was not a freedom for us to mismanage. It was a freedom for us to enjoy him. Many people love the Jesus that frees them to engage in this world versus being set free to engage with God. 
the original premise of God's creation, his initial sentence in his narrative was for us to be engaging with him. He didn't want us to be so consumed with one another, nor the trees, nor the animals, nor created things. He wanted his creation to engage with him. Do you understand or do we understand the freedom that we have, not the freedom to, to do what we desire <clears throat> or the freedom to do God's will, but we have the freedom to engage with God, him alone. We have the freedom that but after Adam and Eve ate from the tree, we no longer had that freedom. We had to sacrifice. We had to kill goats and animals. We had to do ritualistic uh, 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 duties to get even a glimpse or even a conversation before God that if we wasn't clean enough, they used to tie ropes with bells on them on the priests. If they went to the holies of holies, if they dropped dead, the other priests had to drag them out. But even though we are still to a degree unclean, he said, because you are dripped and, and immersed in the blood of my son, you can come as close to me as you want. Do you imagine the freedom that we have to get close? By your free will, you determine how close you want to get to him. But what is keeping us from desiring to be close? It's not that we don't have access. We just don't have the right attitude towards the access. We look at the access based upon, well, you know, God is, that's why American Christianity is a, is, a, is a sugar down form of God's original intent for the church. You go to Asia, you go to Africa where God is scarce, where they will cut your head off, the anointing is stronger. You come to America where God is everywhere. We got four or five different apps. We got a God little box for our apps and we put all of our God apps in there. God is everywhere. We got different versions of the Bible. We got everything. That's why we treat them like we don't need them, because he's so accessible. We look at accessibility based upon, well, I can just go to this church. I can go and do this. I can go do that. I, I got access to the spiritual disciplines. But God says there's a big difference between having access to the disciplines. You have access to me as a friend. God is two things that I really enjoy that we should all endeavor to seek, that we can seek him as a father and as a friend, father to the fatherless, a friend that sticks closer, closer than a brother, a father and a friend. There's, there's nothing in this world that, that the reason why suicide is at its highest, the reason why depression is at its highest to a degree is because people either don't have no father or no friend. When you miss the father, there's been a lot of great single moms that did an amazing job. But if you look at a, at a child who had that discipline, that instruction from a man, when we walk into the cafeteria, the kids are screaming, one voice of a man in the cafeteria, the volume goes about all the way to zero. What happens with the presence of a father, it gives us a level of security and stability. But the presence of a friend. A person. That's why David said his friendship, his friendship with Jonathan surpassed the love of women. That's deep, poetic. He says, you know, my friendship is more than sex with all these concubines and women out here because that's that's nothing. That should just satisfy my own sexual desire. But a friend goes deeper. That's why God said, man, till you desire me as a father and a friend, you will always continue to live this life frustrated. We got to get to a place where we say, call me back to freedom, not to use my members for myself, but for me to say, you know what, God? The angels look curiously on our relationship with God. They, they righteously, enviously look upon our relationship with him. A righteous envy, I'm sure. A righteous jealousy, I'm sure. I'm pretty sure they're like, well, dadgum, he didn't die for the angels. You know he didn't die for the angels. He died for us. <clears throat> you, you, a relationship deepens when someone sacrifices something dear to them. It deepens. The angel's like, man, God, man, <clears throat> you still love these jokers? <laughs> you still love these individuals who don't care about you? We, we serve your inner course, outer course. We, we serve you well. And they look at us and we're, I bet you they'd be like, I wish I can get to know God like you know him. Because God's like, man, I don't want to be known about I want to be known intimately. Calling us back to freedom. Free worship. Free communion. 
I don't want to die and find that I only scratched the surface of what God intended for us to have. I don't want to be that guy where God's like, man, I kind of, man, man, let me show you what I had reserved for you. That's why I tell people, man, we as a, com, com, a, 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 a people haven't even scratched the surface of what God wants to do. But how can we find out what he wants us to do if we don't make sure that we're frequently in his presence? Could you be sitting on something that if you were to die today, God shows you your shelf, your shelf <clears throat> in his space, where he says, this is the books I have for you to write. This is the vision I have for you. Here are the dreams I try to give you a hint about. I try, I try to give you clues. I try to encourage you mysteriously. I try to let you know in a subtle way. I try to show you, but why did you allow these things that you were free to do in country, but these things end up binding you from me? It's so crazy that we're free to the world, but we allow ourselves to be bound towards God. The things of this world, the things that the flesh desires is what the devil uses to bind us from and operate in the freedom that we have in him. That's why the text says, man, do not even make room for your flesh. Don't even think about the works of the flesh, because I'm telling you right now, it's the love, the joy, the peace that gives you access to me. Let's keep going. Point two. Or let's finish this. But unlike Adam and Eve, we are commanded not to use that freedom for the flesh. Adam and Eve, of course, they were, they were naked and unashamed. They were perfect. That's why I tell, I tell my kids sometimes, don't strive after perfection or don't, don't get so consumed with privilege. Be, be consumed or embrace the pain you have. I said, man, them little boys over there, over there in South Charlotte and them places where they got a lot of money, some, not all, very privileged. I say, we got to make sure we change our perception of privilege. Many of us would have been crippled if we had a lot of cash. We would have been crippled if we was eating off of gold spoons and silver, cutting silver with silver forks. We would have been crippled because there's a lot of people who go through a sheltered home, sheltered private schools, sheltered colleges, and when the world slaps them in the throat, the world don't slap you in the face, the world punch you in the throat. <laughs> punch you right in the throat. <clears throat> and they can't stomach it. Our principal, we was talking today about, we got to change our perception of Title I schools. And I was like, that's true, because she was like, you see resiliency in these kids. And it's crazy how we want privilege. And that's what, what crippled Eve gave power to the woman with the alabaster box. What crippled Eve, what Eve had, gave access to the woman at the well. What Eve had crippled her because she was perfect, complete. That's why I don't get mad with God on the path that you're on. Because the path you're on is building the resilience that you will need to not only stay real, not only to be relevant, to, but to be able to reach the people. When you're perfect and you got it all together, you got blinders. That's why I told those kids, man, you actually have freedom. Because right now you get a chance to go through life early. You got the cheat codes. <laughs> You're able to see life firsthand. You able to know what struggle, up, down, left, right, A, B, C struggle. You know all the codes. You know how to, you be like, you know, I can stomach this because I went through some things. That's why I tell people, don't utilize this freedom to be reckless. Utilize this freedom to get to know God in a real way. Give your spirit all the opportunity your flesh desires. Whichever one you give opportunity to will flourish. Give your spirit all the opportunity your flesh desires. Whichever one you give opportunity to will flourish. We give too much opportunity to our sin nature. Do you even give, or I could include myself, do we even give the spirit of God an opportunity? Every time I pray before I preach, I say, God, I don't want to be egotistical or prideful and assume that you will speak through me. 
I want to humbly give you the opportunity to speak through me. Some of us would get so caught up, well, I've studied. These are my notes, God. And no, no, no. <laughs> I'm going to say everything. We got to say, before we even say a word out of our mouth, God, I give you an opportunity to invade my day. I give you the uh, spirit of God. I'm giving you opportunity first before my flesh. Imagine if you practice that every day. You say, I'm going to give my spirit opportunity first before you brush your teeth, before you scratch your nose, before you look at your phone, before you let a flesh do anything. You give your spirit opportunity first. Imagine how far we will be. Being led by the spirit of God. Being led means I'm giving you the right to. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He ain't going to make you do nothing. He's going to say, you know what? I'm here on assignment. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I don't know what he, how he really feels. You know, I'm sure he loves us <laughs> in an unmeasurable way. <laughs> but grieving him does say, does speak volumes. Grieving means frustration. Grieving means uh, um, I want to, but you're not letting me. What has the Holy Spirit been trying to do through you but can't do. Now, I know, I know that sounds like a contradictory statement that the omnipotent, omniscient God who can do anything is limited. But why do we grieve the spirit of God when he wants to use us? Are you utilizing this freedom to say, Holy Spirit, work freely through me? How many people have we passed by that the Holy Spirit want us to talk to? But because we're so tunnel vision, we don't see. Every day we should endeavor to say, you know what? Spirit of God, I'm going to be in tune and grafted, one with. So that anytime you want interrupt, to interrupt my day, you can. Do we give him that license? The text continues to read, it says, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. But through love, love, but through love, serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you're not consumed by one another. I think a lot of us, the reason why we don't know how to love is because we don't know how to love ourselves. We look at loving ourselves as a selfish thing versus an opportunity to make sure that I'm cared enough for that I can be able to care for others. He says, man, give opportunity for your spirit. Could it be that the Holy Spirit is saying, give me the free reins so that as you allow me to be nurtured, allow me to have the reins, that it actually help you to help yourself? That it actually not only help you help yourself, but actually help you to help others? When you walk by the flesh, you're more selfish. When you walk by the spirit, you're more selfless. Because when you walk with him, you say, you know what? I'm not going to devour you. I'm going to uplift you. It's hard to uplift people when you're pressed down. Sin presses down, keeping us from uplifting, not, even on, not just ourselves, but others. Next point, love defends, lust devours. <clears throat> love defends, lust devours. God has given us the freedom to love. Any, whichever one you give the power to or the opportunity to will flourish and thrive. Most of us think that we're in love or trying to be or endeavoring to be lovely, but we're really selfishly lustful. The reason why we devour one another is because we're lusting after something. Either I'm lusting for what you have, or I'm trying to lust beyond you. Or I might be lusting for you. <clears throat> lusting for, lusting beyond, whatever. Because this flesh has a way of saying, I want what I want and I want it now. You saw the commercial, it's my money and I want it now. We scream out of our lives every day at the window of our lives saying, this is my life, I want it now. I want to do what I want to do. But if you want to walk by the Spirit and in true freedom, you have to kill this flesh. Let's keep going. Y'all all right? Mm -hmm. Keep in step with the Spirit. Let's go to verse 16. <clears throat> but I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. 
For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. Let's look at the first point. Spiritual success is predicated on spiritual submission. My success spiritually is predicated on my spiritual submission. All of our walks must be by the Spirit of God. Our spiritual success is predicated on our spiritual submission. The Bible says, submit yourself therefore unto God, resist the devil and he'll flee. Everything begins with us submitting. In order for us to be led, we have to first be submitted. Now that's not, that's easier said than done, ladies and gentlemen. To submit my whole self to God, every compartment, I gotta actually, you know, abide by the truth. Listen, man, if I wanna succeed spiritually, I must submit myself. That's not easy for us men to do or women. Submission has a negative connotation. What you mean submit to some man? What you mean submit to authority? You talk to people about, I forget F authority. I don't care about authority. That's what they, they, this mindset of the downgrading of respect and honor is, is, is widespread. No, nobody really wants to submit. Could it be the devil's original design for us to lose the art of submission? That when we don't understand submission, we won't understand how to submit towards God? That all of a sudden now we're equal to God. It's not God above us. Well, God, I kind of want to do this. So we talk to God as if God is not our leader. Have you ever been in a situation where someone crosses the line of a leader? That person doesn't have a job long. But we, per we perpetrate on God's grace because we're like, well, well, well God would be all right. Man, I don't think we know the other side of God. <laughs> we know the loving side. <laughs> But what about the wrathful God, the God who's who really hates sin? You're like the God who's like, yo, hold up, bro. You, you, you're messing up some things. He's saying, you know, I'm not saying for you to fearfully as far as being afraid, submit to me, but submit because you you reverence me. Submit because you know that I have the capability, but I haven't like man until we treat God like he deserves to be treated. We won't know how to treat this life. Every day we got to say, you know what, God, continue to give me glimpses of who you are. Because my spiritual success is predicated on my submission to you. All of our walks must be by the Spirit of God, meaning I walk with our friends, I walk away from our friends, our public walk, our private walk, I walk with our lady friend, our guy friend, our boyfriend, husband. All of our walks have to be completely submitted. We walk good amongst other people. Our social media shows a walk that's so divine <laughs> that people don't even think you sin. <laughs> but, it's, it, but, it, but everything, all of our walks must be submitted. All of our walks must be submitted and led by the Spirit of God. How are you walking in all areas? That's a question for all of us. That's why I don't got time to worry about what Drew doing in his life. I don't got time because I got to make sure all of my walks are according to the standards of God, not through works righteousness, but saying, God, I want to walk better. I don't want to just run. We be, we be wanting to run before we learn how to walk. But before you learn how to walk, you got to first know how to crawl. You got to understand how to do all stages and learn how to humble yourself. How do you walk privately? Because you're not measured by what you show. You're measured by who you really are when no one's watching. Do we care about that person's development? Because you can fake it before as many people as you can fake it from in front of, but you can't fake someone who knows the difference between real and the fake. Because the real have real habits. The real actually have real disciplines. The real actually do this thing. But see, and the real actually have real fruit. <laughs> Many of us got that, those apples that be in the aisles, not in the refrigerators. We got the apples that, that, that just be plastic. It looks real. Poor babies be walking down the aisle, like, Mama, I want an apple. Baby boy, baby girl, that apple is not real. And that's how many people are. Oh, that's how God is to you sometimes. You ever had God speak to you? I don't know if this happens, but God be like, that ain't really real. You talk to God, you engage with God, God will show you. They look, they have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. A form of something is worse 
<laughs> than many of us believe it to be. A form of godliness, but no power. God says, man, you want, Paul was like my dude. I don't talk with eloquency of words and speech. I don't get deep because Paul was amongst some of the some of the, the, the marketplace where Paul was debating in Rome and Corinth. Those, those people were sharp. Them Jewish boys were sharp. Them people knew it. They, they, they knew philosophy. They knew Greek. They knew all that. They were sharp. But he said, look, people, they got words, but no power. They got a form of something, but no power. He says, the Bible, even Jesus warned his disciples, warned us that you would know them by their fruit, not their form. But how many of us, are you watching, have a form of godliness, but are unaware that there's a storm forming itself against your form? <laughs> and then when, when the storm comes and the people watching, oh, but you boast like you have faith, get a disease. <laughs> get something to touch your body. We'll see if you got the real faith or form of faith. God said, man, I'm going to test to see if your faith is real. God, I got the faith to move mountains. And God said, okay, bring the mountain in. <laughs> or let me draw, draw them to the mountain, draw them to the valley, and let's see what faith they have. Jesus often, it was the non-privileged ones who had more faith than the Jewish. Your faith made you whole. Jesus called a girl a dog. Jesus was like, lady was like, look, man, he says, man, you asking for something you don't have access for. But she was like, even the dogs eat from the crumbs that fall from them. Woo, let a girl spit that game to you. <laughs> let someone come to you and be like, I might not be attractive. But I'm just joking. But imagine someone that has the boldness to say, look, I know I don't deserve. I just even want the crumb. He said, there ain't enough faith. She got more faith than all of Israel. She, Jesus was in a house with a Pharisee. Pharisee like, yo, Jesus, man, you know, I would really love to interview you at my house. Can you come? We're recording a podcast. I would love for you to come over. I want to see your thoughts about certain things going on within culture. I want you to come over. Jesus sat at the table with them. The woman of the city busted in the room. Imagine this woman, the woman of the city, they called her. She didn't even have a name. <clears throat> Eve had a name, but this woman didn't even have a name. Like, those people, when the Bible doesn't put your name in there, that means you wasn't really worth nothing. She was the woman of the city, meaning <laughs> she, her business was around town. She comes in there, <clears throat> takes her hair loose, tears flowing, begins to wipe his feet with her hair. The alabaster box, that thing, they said was worth over 300 dinar. I think Matthew said that was a lot of money. She broke it, that even in the hearts of the Pharisees, the Pharisees was like, you know the Pharisees about that money. We know we preachers, we, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Some people about that money. And so he was like, whoa, 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 whoa. If she would, why she, why she breaking something so expensive? A woman who didn't deserve to be in there, Jesus looked at the man and said, man, since I've been in here, you gave me nothing to drink. But she's yet washing my feet with her tears. I've been in your home and you just wanted a, 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 a extra thousand followers. You just want to know, say that Jesus was at my house, but she knew where I was. When you humble yourself, God is saying, man, people who don't even deserve are the ones who get the access. The church, the heaven is going to be more filled with people that we didn't think was going to make it in than the people that we thought was going to make it in. The people who think they know are the people that's probably not really going to be there. It's nothing wrong with having a knowing, but the Bible says walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. He says, you know what, don't act like you know, because <laughs> many in that day done did a lot of things for your boy, but they ain't make it in. He said, man, you better walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. You better every day go to the tree of your life to see, am I bearing fruit or works of the flesh? What am I bearing? If the bulk of my life is works of the flesh, is that a fruits of the spirit, then something hasn't been changed in my heart. Notice works are different than fruit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, goodness. That's not actions. That's quality. That's actually a substance of orgies and, and lying and envy. Those are actions from a heart. He says, you know what? In order to walk by the spirit, there has to be a heart change. Because 
If you're still doing works of the flesh, then something hasn't been changed yet. But if you want a fruit of the Spirit, he's saying, notice, I always tell people, to, for those who want to understand, the text doesn't say fruits of the Spirit, it says fruit of the Spirit. Meaning that you can't have one without the other. You can't just have love but don't have patience. It's impossible to be in love with someone and not have patience. Be in a relationship. <laughs> be, with, be with your family. Be around people that you have to be around. We'll know if you really love them. Because when a man says, you know what, close your legs, I don't want it now, I'll wait, that's true love. But when a man says, give me access, that's lust. When a woman is forcing you beyond your preparation, she idolized the idea of love. You got to be able to say, you know what, if you're not patient for me, then you're not equipped to love me. If you're not patient with me, you're not equipped to love me. That's why the Bible calls it long suffering. <laughs> Who are you willing to suffer long for? Show sure ain't God for a lot of us. We won't even suffer five. We can't even pray. We can't even suffer five minutes of prayer, let alone suffer through persecution. He said, man, wait till the storm. He said, man, people think the ending is going to be better. <laughs> he said, man, judgment not only comes to the church first, but I'm about to bring such level of chaos and persecution in this world so that my remnant will shine. Listen, man, I laugh at these pups, man. These people, these Christians I see online. I said, man, wait till, wait, wait till that real, real come. Wait till the light grid fall off. Wait, wait till they, wait till the shortages in the, in the, in the, in the Harris Teeters, in the Bilos. Well, ain't no Bilos. The Harveys. Harvey, yeah. That's for the hood. The hood, the hood know where Harvey's at. <laughs> Harris Teeter and Harvey's, two separate sides of the tracks. You've never seen a Harvey close to a Harris Teeter. But what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is what happens when you have no choice but to trust? I want to have enough trust in my trust <laughs> so that when I'm tested, I have a reservoir. I have a reserve. Imagine your boy Elijah. Jesus supplied for him crazy. I mean, God, well, yeah, same thing. S supplied crazy. By the brook. Fed by meat e eating birds. Like God brought the man sandwiches every day from ravens, right? Was ravens? Ravens. Then he was like, yo. I'm not only going to make you, I'm not even going to tell you to move. I'm going to give you a sign to, oh, that's powerful. Don't wait for God to say move. Watch for the signs to move. God don't always like saying stuff. He show you signs. I'm not saying be so consuming signs like you put out a fleece like Gideon. But man, he didn't say, Elijah, it's time to move. He says, do you see the brook drying up? <laughs> Do you see the signs of the time? The Bible says when you see these signs, know that I'm at the door. If you're waiting on him for the say, but are not visual enough to see the signs, you'll miss them. God speaks in code. Didn't the Bible say, I speak in parables so they won't understand? <laughs> I speak in code so that I can have a conversation with you. When you ever walk in a situation they speak in Spanish, <laughs> You'd be like, well, <laughs> I don't know what you said, but I can't even get mad. I can't even get mad. That's how it is when you're really in tune with God. Them, them fake saints would be like, what you hearing? I've been hearing to get my oil up for the last five years. That's what I've been hearing. That's what I've been seeing. Seeing and hearing go together. I've been seeing that I was supposed to make sure I get enough oil while y'all was out there spinning your little coins at the bar. I was over there buying oil for my lamp because I saw the signs. And people are like, well, you mean signs within 24 hours? No, God will give you the signs five years out. God will give you the sign with the right amount of preparation you need to prepare for when the severity come. That's why I tell people when you know God, you'll know the handshake, you know the sign, you know the codes. You'll know, you'll know exactly what he's really saying. And everybody's screaming prosperity, but ain't nobody screaming persecution.
and everybody's screaming that God's gonna do this, God's gonna do that, but ain't nobody talking about America. Do you see the signs, America? Oh, how great the city has fallen. How, do we see the signs that, that the Bible says in that day would be like the days of Noah? Aren't these like the days of Noah? Wasn't they back in the days where they was fighting to sleep with angels? They was because it looked like men? These are the signs of the times, ladies and gentlemen. Man, if you get so caught up on prosperity and not preparation, You'll be shocked when you find out that you don't have enough faith to stomach the adversity that's coming. Oh, man. A lot of people left Germany because they saw the signs. People who love ignorance, even though it's blissful, will be bypassed. I don't want to be so caught up in how the culture says I should live or the culture of Christianity says I should live. That's why I tell people, if your favorite teacher ain't the Holy Spirit, then I don't know if you're really saved, ladies and gentlemen. Or you may have been deceived, or you may still be in elementary, but you gotta, if the Holy Spirit ain't your number one teacher, you can be screwed over. I don't wanna be nobody's favorite. I wanna be somebody's second favorite. Is Holy Spirit your favorite teacher? But how do I prove that the Holy Spirit is my favorite teacher? If you go to the Bible for yourself. When you go to the Bible and you say, Holy Spirit, what does this text mean? You also need the Holy Spirit to help you lead through Scripture. How did the slaves know the Scriptures? How did people who couldn't read know the Scriptures? How did people who was illiterate knew the Bible? Why was the Bible so powerful they kept it away from the least of these? Because they knew the Holy Spirit, the teacher, is still alive. <laughs> and the teacher be holding classes every day, but we don't show up, do we? But we quick to put on a podcast, though. We quick to cut on Bishop this and Pastor that and Apostle this and, and, and Prophet is that. <clears throat> Periscope to Facebook to, to YouTube to Word Network, TBN. To Hillsong TV, we love the pot. Feed me. God said, be very careful whose table you eat from. Ain't that a proverb? Be very careful that you, eat at, that you don't eat at somebody's house, a king's house. If you find it, find it for me, because that's a powerful scripture. It says, be very careful at whose table you eat from. You don't know what they put in the juice. <laughs> You don't know, man. You ever been at somebody's house? You see cats and dogs everywhere? You see a 92? You be like, you know what? This ain't the place for me to eat. <laughs> but we go to all these churches and they got a grade of 88. They got a grade of 85 and 92. And we be eating like they got a grade of 100. You better check your church's sanitation grade. You better check who you eat from sanitation grade because they may be feeding you cats and dogs. That ain't no filet mignon. That ain't no chicken. That could be some ripped up cats and rats. You got to make sure that you can go to God for yourself and let him show you who to learn from as far as teachers, including me. What was it? What did it say? And you sit down to eat with the ruler, observe carefully what is before you, and put a knife to your throat if you are given to appetite. Do not desire his delicacies, for they are deceptive food. Mm. Do not toil to acquire wealth, be discerning enough to desist. When your eyes light on it, it is gone, for suddenly it sprouts wings, flying like an eagle toward heaven. Do not eat the bread of a man who is stingy, do not desire it. Proverbs 23, one for those who are watching online. Be very careful what's presented before you. Holy Spirit must be your favorite teacher. If not, you may be screwed over. Let's go to the next point. <clears throat> Everything boils down to desire. Everything, can someone get me a water, please? Appreciate you, somebody give me a water. Everything boils down to desire. Desire mixed with discipline is the fuel that leads us to a desired destination. Desire mixed with discipline is the fuel that leads us to a desired destination. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. But desire, though, boils down to devotion. Everything boils down to desire. Desire mixed with discipline is the fuel that leads us to a desired destination. But desire, though, boils down to devotion. Whoever has your devotion has your desires and disciplines. And whomever has your desires and discipline determines your destination. 
I'm telling you. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit. And the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. That's powerful. This sounds like a believer that's kind of halt between two opinions. This sounds like someone who's probably got the, their life on park in the middle of sanctification. They have divided desires. I, want, I desire my flesh sometimes. I desire what the spirit wants to do sometimes. I'd rather you to be all in and all out. That's what God wants. He, but it all boils down <clears throat> to your devotion. Who are you devoted to? What are you devoted to? The flesh or the spirit of God, which is the spirit of Jesus himself. That's why he told his disciples, it's expedient for me to go so I can be broken so that my spirit can go everywhere. That I can be with you, the Bible says, even until the end of time. But when we keep giving opportunity to our flesh to thrive, we allow in our flesh to lead us to a certain destination. All of us are heading somewhere, but a bulk of the people listening online or wherever don't know where they're going. With God walking by faith, at times you don't know where you're going, but you know who you're with. But some of us are like, this scares me that, like I remember my first ministry wasn't named Unplugged. Like what if I would have been like, this thing would still be called Kingdom Return, that thing too long. <laughs> K-E for short, <laughs> you know. This, like, but I could have chose. I'm telling you, man, I think about it all the time that what if I would have arrogantly went my own way? We got to make a decision that, man, I'm addicted to how God follows through. It gives me confirmation. I remember before Hendricks gave us the money, <clears throat> we needed about $2,500 to get this program going. And I was asking God, I said, man, I've been here before. I've been here where I thought you said, and I acted, but I try to do it in my own strength. I said, God, we don't have enough money to start this program right now. First, Coles was gonna sponsor, but Coles backed out. Hendrick was gonna sponsor, but they delayed. And I was like, God, you, don't tell me I told these people to follow me out here to this water. <laughs> And I told him we're going to do a program. Got the kids excited. But there's no money. God said, don't look for man to fund you first. Look for me to fund you first. In a matter of two weeks, $2,500 hit the account. I said, when people was dropping stacks, when people drop stacks, you led. <laughs> when you drop $1,000 each per person, you led by the Spirit of God. <laughs> ain't nobody going to write no check for no $1,000 to no ministry if they ain't led. That's why I tell people, be patient with God because you never know who, whose heart he laid your name on. Right now, somebody's considering Joshua Ezzie. And many of us would be like, can you get them to consider me quicker? <laughs> no, God is saying... Everywhere I take you, it's going to stretch your faith. Everywhere I take you, it's going to, that's a principle that you have to learn now. Everywhere God takes you, he will stretch your faith. You heard the song, he may not come when you want him, but he'll sing with me now because I can't sing. But he'll be there. Don't leave me hanging. Don't follow the spirit, y'all. Come on. <laughs> but he'll be there right on time. Why do you think he always come late on our terms, but on time on his terms? He comes late because he says, I'm going to make, I'm going to see if you trust me. Why do you think Jesus, in, Jesus ended up in places, not really for the person who asked, but for somebody else. Jesus said, man, I'm, I'm never going to come when you want me to. I'm going to come about 10 minutes late on your terms. Because when I come late, I'll have an audience. And when I have an audience, 
I have an opportunity. That's why I let God drag you. Why do you think God knew there was a Red Sea right there? God wasn't. God knew. He made the Red Sea. <laughs> he knew. But he wanted to put Moses in a place to see what he'll do. We got to get to a place where we say, you know what, God? I'm 110% devoted to you. I can tell what you're devoted to by what you give your time to, your talents to, and your treasure to. Your time, your talent, and your treasure. Whatever gets the bulk of your time, whatever gets the bulk of your talent, whatever gets the bulk of your treasure, your money, is what you devote it to. God is saying, if those three are not in me, then you're not truly devoted in me. He says, man, I, I deserve the first fruits, not the leftovers. God wants to taste the first of what he would wait. <laughs> it's crazy how God's like, I'm the chef. I'm cooking in your life. Let me taste first. We're making the Lord taste last. God, well, that wilderness was great. I'm going to let this girl taste and see. I'm going to let this guy taste and see. I'm going to let this time, I'm, gonna let, I'm just going to let them taste of your fruit. And God's like, I was the chef that was cooking. Let me taste it first. Do you smell what the Lord is cooking? Boy, that'll preach right there. <laughs> that'll, I'm telling you. Because God is cooking something in our lives. And he's like, man, what I've cooked in your life. That, that's why, man, he says when you get to heaven, the true worshipers are going to immediately cast their crowns. First, because the crown is probably too heavy for us to bear. Secondly, I'm only able to receive this because of you. <laughs> we want to be like Kevin Durant, win the MVP. <laughs> Mama, this is because of you. When we get to heaven, if God give us a mic, <laughs> you better answer right. <laughs> God, I got little, one of the little buttons. <laughs> the, 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 the cloud goes from up under you. <laughs> anyway, let's go to the next point. <laughs> Everything boils down to desire. I read that. Whatever has your de devotion has your destination. Determining your devotion makes the warfare bearable. Determining your devotion makes the warfare. When you are devoted to God, the warfare and trials become bearable because you have the comforter. And because you have the comfort comforter, life is bearable. It ain't easy. Bearable. When you're used to heat and you're in a heat, hot place, it becomes bearable because you, you're accustomed to it. It's crazy how we flaunt and boast that we can bear a situation when we haven't been pruned to bear the presence of God. Why do you think God don't show up to these churches? Because if he shows up, it might be too much for them. Why do you think God don't show up to these churches? Because he says, you haven't got accustomed to my presence privately. If I truly show up in my glory, there's too much sin, habitual sin in here for my presence to be bearable. But when God walks into a place where people who know they're filthy, but because of the blood, they're sanctified and adopted. Oh, man, they know how to bear the presence of God. That's why, man, you, <clears throat> you, we don't even have the ability to bear the anointing, the capacity enough to heal anybody. We can't. Well, them boys was walking with God. Man, you ever met them Africans, them people, them Asian brothers and sisters that know scripture, that know text, that, know, that, 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 that knows the word, that knows how to heal people, see limbs grow? They don't got no TVs. They don't got no reality shows. The only reality show they have is the reality they have with God. That's all they got. That's all they got is the word. The simplicity of the gospel is what gets you the source to the power. That's what it is. Whoa. Not, I don't even know what I said. <laughs> Something about that's what I'm telling you. The simplicity of the gospel. I don't, I don't know. 
You gotta watch the video. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, when we make God too complicated, he said it's the simple things of the, of the world that confounds the, the, that confounds the wise. The simple things. Jesus, man. You made it so simple. But the law made it complicated. Until we get to a place where we say, God, it's you and me. Me against the world. <laughs> Who was that? Anyway, God is me and you against the worldly desires in my own heart. It's simple. It is simple. But it's hard because our hearts are so hardened. The reason why God can't really show up in our lives because we haven't been practicing with him. When he becomes your Mr. Miyagi, and he becomes your trainer. Do you know we have him as our trainer? If he's training us, who can defeat us? Listen, I tell people, man, they, these churches be shouting, the devil is defeated. They run around the church, the devil is defeated. If he was so defeated, then why are we so defeated in our lives? We are more than conquerors. We, we supposed to be victorious. We're supposed to win. And, and man, we, we, why the world richer than us? Why is the world smarter than us? Is it because they're not, they, ain't, they ain't smarter than us when it comes to church? Now, we know how to church, but we don't know how to engraft ourselves in culture. We're more Pharisees than we are Jesus. We are more like the, the Bible says, man, if they go up on their front porches and they pray out loud, that's their reward. Jesus was a smooth operator. He says, man, I ain't going to go to the club with you. The people that may ask them out was the one saying, man, can you come to my house? She's like, I ain't gonna smoke with you. I ain't gonna drink with you. I ain't gonna do nothing crazy with you. But I'm gonna be cool enough for you to still have the, the audacity to ask. Little Nicodemus. Nicodemus is like, I know I'm short. I ain't LeBron, I'm more like Isaiah Thomas. I'm short. But there's something about this man that draws me. We, the church, we like to make distinctions instead of drawing. We, us, you, them. God's like, man, no, go amongst them. Be ye separate in habit indeed. But don't be afraid to eat lunch in the cafeteria in the workplace. Don't be afraid to be available. Don't always go where they want you to go, but be available if they need you. If you don't decide in whom you will be devoted to, you will always be indecisive, immobile, and incompetent. For time, so let's keep going. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Verse 18. But if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. The law is too heavy for any human to bear. That's why we needed Jesus to lift that weight so that we can be above the law. The law is too heavy for any human to bear. That's why God said I had to come down there and lift that weight for you so that you can be above the law. The verse says to keep you from doing what the things you want to do. I think I'm missing the verse. Let's keep going. Man, it's eight o'clock already. Hmm. Y'all learn something? Yeah. Verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual morality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. So people be like, man, well, the scripture don't say everything, but the Bible does say things like these. <laughs> everything else is up but under things like these, okay? So <laughs> if you look at the scripture, you be like, well, I don't see the things like these. 
I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things or practice these things will not inherit. Listen, it's impossible to be in love with God and still practice certain things. It's impossible. <clears throat> it's like, like you, can't, you can't say, well, baby girl, you know I love you. I ain't really had sex with her. I just kissed her. Well, we, we, I ain't go all the way with her, though, you know, but you, I'm just a, you won't really love her. Love has boundaries. Love says, because I love you, I won't. God said, man, Adam and Eve, I said every other tree, I said every tree, but this one. It's crazy how God will say, here's the boundaries. And the first place we go to is not in the square acres that we have. We go to the fence and we look over. We don't go to the trees. Like, man, all them trees, they could have been, we, they should have sinned a thousand years, get some babies or something, so that when Adam and Eve would have felt we would have had Seth, or uh, uh, Seth was, um, anyway, what I'm trying to say is, when there's boundaries, <clears throat> We go, to the, we go to the fence first and look over instead of enjoying what we have. It's crazy. God says, you got me. You have me in the garden. The tree of life was, hold on, there's another, there was two trees in the garden. The tree of knowledge and good and evil and the tree of life. Why do you think the Bible says when God says, let us get them out the garden, because if they eat the tree of life, they wouldn't be, it will be jacked up. That's why I tell people, man, thank God that God gave us the next tree. The tree where he says, man, because of my death on this wood, gives you access to the garden. You was once removed from the garden. But he said, since you couldn't get on that tree, because if you got on that tree, you wouldn't have enough. Oh, my God. If you would have got on that tree or ate from that tree, you wouldn't have had enough for the sins of your own. But he says, you know what? To get back in the garden again, let me be put myself on a tree and die for you. So then now you can have access to the garden again. Listen, man. We got to make sure we ask ourselves, who are we devoted to? Until next time, we'll, we'll finish the rest of this next time. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for who you are. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us the freedom, the opportunity to get to know you. The angels look curiously on the relationship that we have with you. Father God, we thank you that while we have air in our lungs, we have the opportunity to get to know you in this life. God, I don't want to die and hear the stories of what we were supposed to do together. Partners, friends, a father to the fatherless. Ease our frustrations, God, and let us embrace you. Help us, Father God, to put to death the works of the flesh or the flesh in total and help us to humbly submit ourselves to your leadership. I pray, Father, this word was a blessing for those who's listening, watching in this room now. Jesus, we pray, amen.